uh, this Birdsong uh, talk. So I'm really looking forward to it. Lovely to see lots of familiar faces and familiar names in the uh, in the windows at the top as well. So I'm glad that you've all come back for a second or third dose. Um, with that, I'm just going to pass across to Barry and to Keith now. Uh, Keith will take you through everything. Um, one thing I am going to ask, uh, Keith and I were talking beforehand about potential talks for the future. So if there is anything within, you know, anything in the kind of wild Winchester sphere that you particularly interested in to do with birds and things that Keith could talk on, please put it in the chat window and we'll review those as well. Because if there are any great ideas, I mean, Birdsong really came from us talking about it last time out and suddenly about 20 people were like, oh yes, I'll come to that one. So um, yeah, if you've got any ideas on that, great. Anyway, without further ado, I'll pass across to Barry and to Keith. Thank you. Okay, good evening. Thank you very much indeed, Simon. Good evening, Keith Betton here, Chairman of Hampshire Ornithological Society. I've spotted, I had a quick look through the gallery, see who's here, and uh, I recognize quite a lot of friends, so hello to you. Um, I'm going to have an interesting time tonight because I'm actually going to show you slides. I'm also going to act as a DJ, and I'm going to play through this speaker some bird songs. So uh, let's hope I don't get confused. So let's uh, let's try and see see what it's all about. So what is it all about? Bird song. Why do birds sing? Well, it takes a lot of their effort and energy and a lot of their time to sing. So it has to have a benefit for them, and the benefit really is twofold. It's male birds that do the singing, not females. <clears throat> there are a couple of exceptions I'll come on to, but males do the singing. And the main thing that the male is trying to do is to make sure he's got a territory, somewhere where he can attract a female to nest. And although many birds do mate for life, quite a lot of the smaller birds don't. They simply find whichever partner they can each year. So the male is getting a territory, but also the male's trying to get a partner. So it's basically attracting a female, but repelling other males. Now, some females do sing. The interesting exception in the UK is the robin. The, the female robin in winter sometimes does do a small, very quiet song, because male and female robins do sort of separate out in the winter and have separate territories. So uh, for that reason, she needs a song to defend her own territory. But if you go traveling around the world, you'll find that many birds the male and female both sing. And indeed, quite a lot of birds in tropical countries do a duet where the male quite often will start the song and the female will, will, will finish it. So if you've ever been with your wife and you're a man and you start a sentence and your wife finishes it for you, you know exactly how these birds feel. So anyway, around the world, we've got lots of different birds that can sing in different ways. That's another talk maybe for a different time. I don't mind we talk about worldwide bird song we could have some interesting ones after i've spoken today have a listen to the mu musician wren see if you can find that on on the internet that's probably the best sound of all i'm going to show about 35 40 species all of them are birds you can find around winchester I've not gone beyond those uh, that area and i've also um left some time at the end for for talking so that's what it's all about now how do I recognize bird sounds and how can you recognize bird sounds? Well, this app, the Collins Bird Guide, is great. The, the book itself is the best hard bad, hardback book you can get on our British birds, but you can get the app either for um, an iPhone or a, an Android phone or whatever, just go online and find it, it's about 14 quid. Um, and not only does it have pictures like this and maps, but it's also got recordings and when you're out bird watching and you're hearing something singing or calling and you want to just compare it then that's the ideal way to do it okay so that's what i'm going to use the recordings from tonight so you'll see me fiddling with my phone hopefully nobody will phone me in the middle of all this blackbird you know i'm going to use most of the slides which i used last time so this is basically like the same talk all over again but just with sound um so the blackbird is a very very rich sound i'm just looking it up now to get it lined up for you um, I think oh, it's just almost like a chocolatey sound, really rich. Blackbirds sing from about March onwards, so we're not hearing it yet, but here's what you'll hear. Yeah. 
that's a lovely rich I, when i say chocolatey sound it's kind of rich and thick it's not a thin sound there's a lot of quality to that so that's the black i'm not going to play all the alarm calls and other things otherwise we're going to run out of time but it's like learning a foreign language bird song once you know for example blackbird and you know song thrush then your spot a missile thrush because it's different to the two that you know already so as i say blackbird rich and every time it sings it's a different sound now moving on the song thrush is is quite notable because what it does is it takes a note and repeats it over and over again so here's the So the blackbird doesn't repeat, the song thrush does repeat, um, and therefore that helps you to identify the missile thrush. Now the missile thrush has a nickname of the stormcock, and that is because it's, it does tend to sit at the tops of trees in really horrible stormy weather and carry on singing, whereas other birds just give up. The thing I always think about the missile thrush, I don't think I put it in my talk last time, so this is a close relative of the other two, is that it actually is a very strident sound that musically stays pretty much at the same pitch the whole time. It's almost like it's got stuck in a groove and it can't move on to the next bit of song. See what I mean? So it stays at the same level. It doesn't kind of go up and down very much. It's almost like it's got stuck in a bit of a groove and, and can't find a new phrase. Now, one of the birds, by the way, those all those birds, uh, the blackbird starts in March, the song thrush starts in December, uh, the missile thrush could be any time from January, the robin, which is our next one, the robins actually sing all through the year. They just have a period around about August, September when they stop. Um, so they really do ring, sing a lot of the time. They slightly alter their song though. It's, um, it's more strident in the autumn than it is in the spring, which is bizarre. And they do sing right through the winter. Now the robin, I always think, is a sad sound. Hard to describe that, um, but it just sounds like this bird is telling you a story. And you know, it's a hard luck story. It's not doing well. See what I mean. goes down at the end. Now, one thing about robins, which is really interesting, is that they're very often confused by street lamps. And they are the bird that very often will sing in the middle of the night near to street lamps. And I know I used to get phoned up uh, by people and they'd say, had a nightingale singing by my street lamps in the middle of the night, you know, and say, oh, that's interesting. I bet you've got orange street lamps. And they go, yeah, how do you know that? And I said, well, because it was a robin. And they, they particularly get confused by the orange ones and they just sing throughout the night. Some of you may have heard that. It probably happens a bit less than it used to because I get the feeling that orange street lamps are out of fashion these days. But um, that's, that's exactly what used to happen. Certainly responsible for a lot of nightingale records. So this is um, the dunnock. This is the bird that has the exciting sex life. And um, if you missed the first talk, then the brief version of that is that the female has quite often two males, um, neither of which, um, well, they, one knows about the other, but the other one doesn't know about the other one. And only one gets to be the dad. But anyway, it's a long story. Look it up on the internet. The dunnock has a, a nice little thin song. It doesn't sing for very much of the year, um, but here it is.
I don't know if that came through well, but it's it's not a very striking song, really. In a way, a little bit like the robin, but uh, but more cheerful than the robin. So that's the dunnock. Uh, now this is probably the most powerful sound of all of our garden birds, and, and the wren is quite an interesting one. It's a tiny, tiny bird, but it has a huge volume of sound. And one thing that makes birds different from us is that when we get a loud noise in our ears, it actually damages the hairs inside our ears, which help us to hear, which means that if we if you hear a very loud sound for days afterwards, you can't you can't hear very well. And sometimes indeed you don't ever hear well again. Now mammals can't regrow those hairs, but birds can. Now a bird like the wren sings at over 100 decibels. So if it didn't have hairs in its ears that regrew, then it wouldn't be able to hear. So um, just one major difference between birds and, and mammals. So here's the song of the wren, very, very fast, powerful and loud. So that's a really loud and very fast song. It's fascinating, actually, if you can record that and slow it down, because it's uh, every single note you can hear after another. So that's the wren, our loudest one. Now, here's a little tiny bird, the gold crest, which is our smallest British bird. So uh, it and the fire crest are both the smallest. Um, just trying to work out how to spell gold crest. Here we go. Gold crest is a very high pitched sound. Now, I can't hear them terribly well now. I have to be pretty close to them. So, you know, depending on which side of 50 you are, you'll, you'll either find it's easy to hear, or you might find you're starting to struggle. Um, interestingly, men lose their upper frequencies quite early and, and women don't, um, but women lose their lower frequencies. So a lot of women can hear Goldcrest. I'm going to put the speaker right by the, left, the microphone so you should be able to hear this, the very thin sound of the Goldcrest. as loud as I've just played there, I put the volume right up, but, um, you know, hard one to uh, to hear. Um, right, next bird, the blue tit, the commonest of our garden tits. It's got a lot of different calls and songs. A lot of the time when you hear it, you're not actually hearing a song, you're hearing, you're hearing the call. So let me play you the, the song. So that's the that's the main song of the blue tit. I'll just play you a couple of calls because they do so many different sounds. Yeah. So you've probably heard quite a lot of those going on around the bird table. Uh, but the first one I played is the song, the one that the male does in order to um, attract a female and so on. Now, the, the next one on the list, really, for that, for, for tits, is the, the great tit. Um, now, <laughs> talking to Les, who I notice is online tonight, and welcome, Les. Les was saying to me, you know, here's a recording. He sent me a recording on uh, WhatsApp, and I had a listen to it. And um, it was a great tit. And he said, oh, God, I should know that. And I said, well, don't worry, Les. Uh, there are actually 70 different calls that the great tit makes. Uh, so it made him feel a bit better, or maybe not, actually. I probably made him feel worse. So basically, with the, with the great tips, a kind of seesaw sound, or quite often it's described as being teacher, teacher, teacher. But there are plenty of other calls and sounds. Here's another one. 
and another. And but the main one. So I think of that really as a sort of seesaw kind of sound. Now it's at the kind of level where you could sort of almost whistle that yourself, the same level as the, the great tit. But if you're listening to this one, the cold tit, it's way more high pitched. Now, cold tits come to gardens a bit in the winter. You're probably going to find them more in pine plantations and things like that in the summer. But the song is, is pretty much the same as the, the great tit, but with a much higher frequency. So that's the cold tip. Oops. Oh, and there's another one. It's a it's quite a thin sound, but you can see it's faster. So it's fancy maybe. If you're musical, you probably know what I'm talking about with this, but if you're not musical, generally you find bird song really hard. And I, I do understand that that difficulty. Now the the other tit we want to have a listen to. Not sure if I mentioned this last one, tit. Um, and it's hard to describe whether it has a song or not. It it kind of does. Um, but I'm just going to play you all the different calls it does because they're all they're all a bit different. So here's here's one of them. So that little kind of cherry sound. It also has a high pitch sound as well. And there's also another call like this. Very sound, because that you can pick up from some distance away. I find that when the when the birds are close, I can hear the high pitch. Um, Looks as though we may have, Keith may have just dropped off. Barry, if you put your finger, thumb, thumb up if you can hear me. Hear, hear, but can't see, Keith. Can you hear me okay? You can hear, Keith. Yeah. Hi, Barry. You're, You're back. Okay, good. Yeah, we've got your visual back. I don't know what happened. I'm here for a bit. Right, um, back to my, 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 my screen. Back. Yeah, we've got you, but not your... Here uh, it is, right. Long tail tit. So I've done long tail tit. And I'm now going to move on to starling. Now, starling is a really interesting one because it's... Keith, Keith can I just interrupt you, Keith? Oh, we've, Keith, we've not got your presentation. Bear with me. Bloody earpiece. Sorry, Barry. We've not got your presentation, Keith. You need to bring it back on for us. Say that again, Barry. Can you bring your presentation back on? Okay. Are you seeing a uh, Barry? Give me a thumbs up. You yeah, see, if you can go on a sli go on a slideshow and we'll be there. We can yeah. see it. We well, can see I'm the not, I've got my in, so I'm Sorry, I haven't, didn't have my earpiece in. It's all right. Uh, uh, okay now, are we? Yeah, if you can just switch to slideshow, we'll be up and running again. Will do. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It all suddenly, I just uh, you all disappeared. Um, right, back to where we were. It's a bit like being on live TV, this. Exciting. Um, starling. Starlings are related to minor birds. And um, minor birds, of course, do a lot of uh, imitation. And uh, starlings do that as well. So when you listen to a starling, which can sing at almost any time of the year, you'll find it's imitating other birds or, or indeed sounds it hears. So here's what the, the starling sounds like.
a wood pigeon going in there as well, but that was a real wood pigeon, not the, not the starling. So starlings basically imitate other birds. And we do know from studies that birds that do mimicry, they, again, it's always the male, um, the wider the repertoire that that bird has, the more attractive that bird is to a female because they learn more sounds as they get older. So if you hear a bird that's got 25 different types of mimicry, it basically um, is going to be a better father because it's more experienced. So, uh, so there you go. Um, it's probably a bit like us telling jokes. Men who can only tell two jokes don't get the girls. Those who have a whole repertoire of 25, well, in my experience, it works really well. Anyway, um, on to the house sparrow. Um, I just put it in because I love house sparrows. They're one of my favorite birds. Um, good to notice that house sparrows seem to be doing quite well around the Winchester area. So uh, here we go with the house sparrow. So that's the sort of communication call they make. But if you've got one doing its, the male doing its song, I must admit, it was a bit of a sad day when they said that we weren't going to be hearing that in 20 years time. But I think, I think the numbers seem to have turned the corner, which is good. So we're going to move on to some of the finches now. Um, the chaffinch um, is, is another interesting one because chaffinches, as I mentioned in, I think, the talk I gave last time, got taken to New Zealand and Australia by, um, or certainly to, to New Zealand, by, by British people who went there and missed the song. Um, and the interesting thing is that over the years that they've been there, they've not met any real chaffinches, as it were, not any ones that live here. So they've slightly got kind of New Zealand accent. They have changed slightly. Anyway, here is a chaffinch song. And I, am, I imagine this one is a bit like a bowler coming up with a ball in a cricket match and bowling the ball. So you've got the bowler running up, finally bowling the ball at the last minute with a big flourish. Now they do make a lot of other sounds. Um, something like 30 or 40 different sounds. Uh, I'll give you an example of one of them. And that's really that make that sound, but they're all very slightly different. So perhaps won't go into the detail on that. So that's your chaffinch. Now, greenfinch, uh, sadly declining at the moment um, due to a, an illness called trichomonosis. I think the greenfinch sound is one of the best sounds of summer. Um, so the, the song, it's just a sort of endless twittering. That, that wheezy sound that quite do that on its own a lot of the time, that's a really key sound for me. They've got a couple of other calls. And this one, just a little Twitter. So I've got a sign saying my internet's uh, unstable. Let's hope we uh, we stay together. Um, right, goldfinch, another really beautiful sound. Another species that they took to uh, New Zealand. Um, by the way, if, if you do find that you can't hear me or I suddenly disappear, please put your hand up. Otherwise, I really won't know. I'll just carry on talking to myself. Um, goldfinch, um, quite often, actually, in the old days, they were, they were caught and put in cages because their song was so beautiful. It's a lovely jangling sound. So a real kind of lovely twittery sound there. And sometimes I just do a little bit like that. But that's that's one of the nicest finches, I think. Now, I didn't mention the bullfinch in my talk last time. I don't really know why, probably an oversight on my part. Um, it's not a common bird, but uh, if you get them, then you probably get them quite often. It's a bird, this is the male, the female's got a brown breast, um, but the same sort of overall coloration otherwise. 
And if you want to find a bullfinch, knowing the call is absolutely really important because you very rarely see them and you hear them and then you realize they're there. So there's a couple of sounds. Um, first of all, the call. It's not a very loud sound, but if you can hear that uh, when you're out and about, look for the bullfinch and then might just appear. The song itself drawn out. So it's just a, like a little, little toy, you know, sort of tooting sound, really. Okay, so I didn't talk about any warblers last time because it was a winter talk, really. So Chiff Chaff and Willow Warbler are two warblers that actually look pretty much identical unless you really have a very, very familiar with them. Um, they look the same, but they sound very different. Now, the Chiff Chaff gets its name from the song which it gives. Must say, I like birds that sing their own name, makes life a lot easier. Um, Cuckoo's another one, of course. Um, now, the willow warbler, look at that. It's a very similar looking bird, more green in colour. The thing about the, um, the chiff chaff and willow warbler is the chiff chaff's got dark legs, the willow warbler's got pale legs. Willow warbler actually is declining quite fast in southern England, but is doing incredibly well in Scotland. So I think it's a real sign of global warming. They, they like it a little bit colder. So they've moved north. And the Willow Warbler's got a beautiful song. So that one goes down the scale. I'll just play you a bit more of that. You've got a uh, chap in the background there that's sort of getting involved in that. Um, just watching the cat there, Alison. I hope I hope the cat's enjoying the bird song. Cat in the in the uh, the video. <laughs> right, um, black cap. Two warblers that actually black cap and garden warbler. Two warblers that actually sound different. So. Quick look at the black cap. A number of you have reported black caps just recently. Uh, here is the male black cap, and he's singing as well, which is good. Um, have a listen to this rather scratchy song. So black caps are here already because, as I mentioned in one of my posts, we have a summering population of black caps that tra then travels down in the winter to Spain and North Africa. And we have a wintering population that actually have bred already in Germany and maybe Belgium and other parts of mainland Europe and come over to us for the winter, which is really quite weird. It's almost like the, the species swaps around like musical chairs. Anyway, we've already got a few black caps. They'll, they'll be singing quite early on. So the one I want to compare with now is the garden warbler, which is a, a much less common bird. It's, it's less found in sort of woodland. It's more found in scrubby areas. Um, and you don't see it that often, actually. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice one to have on. But the song is very similar indeed. The thing I would point out that it's actually deeper and it's actually faster. So the black cap was a bit of a sort of lazy song. This garden warbler, they're all slightly different, though. Um, sounds to be much more in a hurry.
So that's the garden warbler. So more of a scrubby area bird. It's a faster song, but it's really quite similar to the black cap. Um, takes a bit of time to learn it. I would say the best thing is maybe get a, get your phone out, record it. Uh, if you don't have the app, well, then send me the recording and, and I'll tell you, hopefully tell you which one it is. A couple of others quickly. Um, the white throat. Actually, the official name is common white throat because there is another white throat, which I'll tell you as well. So common white throat's got a very scratchy song. And this one is, again, is a summer migrant going to get here in April. And this will be mainly on farmland, particularly on hedgerows. And what you find is the male will quite often fly up and then down in doing his display. So that's the common white throat, a farmland bird mainly in hedgerows. Uh, and it is quite common, it's just it's very specific to farmland. So the other white throat, much, much rarer, in fact, really, you know, um, probably the rarest of all our sort of open country warblers is, is the lesser white throat. So I'm gonna play you that. I think it sounds, hang on, better put, put the slide on as well, um, much darker looking bird uh, with a sort of almost looks a bit evil really compared to the white throat. Um, it's got a song that's not unlike the Chaffinch, actually, if you're not familiar with it. So that rattle. That rattle, I think, is very much like the back, the, the very end of the, the Chaffinch. Just play it again. So um, you, really quite a scarce bird, not one we find very often out in the countryside around Winchester, but they are there in small numbers. Okay, so um, away from, from the warblers and uh, have a look at a couple of the woodpeckers. Now woodpeckers, interestingly, um, they, uh, let me find that, there we go. Um, they use their drumming sound in some cases as the equivalent of song. So a great spotted woodpecker doesn't have a song, it's got a call which I can play you but the main thing to listen for is the drumming and that drumming is nothing to do with finding food it's all about announcing its territory so here's the drumming so it's a it's a fairly short drum doesn't doesn't do very much just do it again So almost all the woodpeckers you're going to hear drumming around Winchester are going to be great spotted woodpeckers. There are in some parts of Hampshire lesser spotted woodpeckers, but they're really rare. And I didn't put it in because it's it's just such a rare bird by comparison. Um, what I could play you, I suppose, is, is the call. I just got rid of it, but I'll put it back on again. The call of the uh, great spotted woodpecker is this. And they do that a lot. You'll hear that probably more than you hear the drumming. Now, green woodpeckers are, um, they have a nickname, the yaffle. And the thing about green woodpecker is that it, it doesn't use the drum as its way of communicating territory. In fact, it hardly ever drums at all. I've never actually heard one drum. Um, and the reason it doesn't need the drum is it's got a very, very loud call, which is where it gets its name, yaffle. So it's basically like a, a laugh. Okay, so that's your that's your great that's your green woodpecker. So you've probably heard that in the countryside a lot. Very often we'll hear that sound from a long way off because it's a, it's a very loud sound, the yaffle. Now, although it's not a woodpecker, it behaves like a woodpecker. The nuthatch is. Um, a loud bird, and uh, very often I find, uh, I can't even spell her nuthatch, nuthatch. Um, I very often find them because I've actually heard the sound. So there's several things you can listen for, is, is one of them.
that's the sound that I nearly always hear from nut hatches. That's when they're quite excited around the nest or in the territory. But they have got a song, which is like this. And they also do this. And in the spring, but only in the spring, the male has this. So that's the nuthatch. It's a very loud bird and one that gives its uh, presence away very often by, by doing all those calls. Right, onto a couple of comparisons. Um, you're probably all seeing lots of buzzards around. Uh, they're getting very common now in, um, in Hampshire. Um, and it's a very, very familiar mewing call. And the one to compare that with is the red kite. And red kites don't call very often. Buzzards call pretty much all the time. They're always making noises. But red kites really only call near the nest or when they're excited, maybe they're in a, in a group. Um, and it's a, it's a very nice high pitched sound. I'll just play it again. Once more. So that's the sound that you may not have heard yet, and uh, but if you stick around with red kites, you will hear it fa fairly often. Okay, so people always want to know about owls. We've got several owls in our area. Um, tawny owl is the commonest. Um, male and female have different sounds. The male is the one that we mainly hear doing this really strident song. So that's the that's the song of the male tawny owl. Now I haven't got a recording here of the female, but the female much like sort of strangulated, very much like a sore throat, quieter version of that. What she mainly does though is the sound that goes kiwik. <laughs> So that's the sound of the female tawny owl. She mainly makes that sound. When the male is, uh, is, is making a hooting sound, if the female makes that noise, very often the male will then go and join her. So the other owl that we have, whoops, I just need to go back one. The other owl we have, one of my favorites is the little owl. And little owls um, are not so common these days, but there are a few places where they exist around Winchester. Um, and uh, it's got several sounds, but I'll, I'll just play the first one. I think it's very much a cat-like sound for me. Oh, not that one. Sorry. So that's the spring sound of the male. I'll just play it. I heard that last week, even though it was a very cold day. Now the cat, the, the, the cat-like sound I was going to play you is uh, is this one. So it's more anyway. Little greed. Now I put this in because. Path there, you're bound to hear little grieve at some point, and it's a really beautiful trilling sound. Just do that once more. So that's the little grieve, more often heard than seen. Um, so, one of the favorites for me. Of, uh, of farmland and, and other open countryside is the skylark. And um, 
it's an interesting bird because it's able to breathe whilst it's flying. So what it does is it actually is going like this with its wings, but as it's doing that, that is actually helping it to breathe in. Um, it's quite a hard system to explain, but they're able to keep singing without any breaks for maybe a minute or two minutes. It's not on one breath. It's on continuous breath. breath. But um, here we go with the Skylark song. And the thing about skylarks is they will do that up in the sky or they'll also do it from a seated position on a fence post or something like that. So um, that is the end of the, the bird song. Just before I move on to the questions and answers, just wanted to remind you about HOSS, Hampshire Ontological Society, a number of you are members, um, but that's our website, hoss.org.uk. Uh, if you join, which is £16, you get this very nice newsletter, the one with the owl on the front. Um, three times a year, you also get the Hampshire Bird Report. And we have the Hampshire Bird Atlas, which is £25. And we're selling that at the moment. But the deal we're offering you, uh, by the way, that's the inside with lots of photographs and maps and graphs and details of birds, is that if you actually join HOSS as a result of this talk, uh, for £16, we'll give you the Atlas for 15 instead of 25 plus postage. And if you'd like to do that, you can see there, I think, the email address of Brian Coates, who is our, uh, our salesman, and uh, he'll very happily take that from you. But I'll leave that on the screen just for a little bit, so if you want to take a shot of it or write it down. But uh, £15 for the Atlas instead of 25 if you join Hoss as a result of this talk, and joining Hoss is £16. Just a small promo. Um, I know a lot of you joined as a result of the talk last time, which was really fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. So uh, I'm just going to now say any questions. I'll just get my earpiece back in before you start, Barry, and uh, I'll hand over to you to, to tell me what people would like to ask. You ready, Keith? Are you ready? All mic'd up? Can you hear me all right, Keith? Uh, I can't, no. One second. Keep, keep going. I can, I can yeah. hear you a bit. Okay. Okay. Well, let me try, Keith. Can you hear me? Let me try with the first question. See if you can pick up on it. Oh, I know you're just chitching. Give you a second to change your, your headphones. Is that better, Keith? Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. Uh, actually, one just come in. I'll, I'll, I'll juggle them around, giving got a bit of time. Uh, the call of the kestrel. Um, not one you've covered. You covered some other. Birds of pale raptors, but um, can you can you comment on the on the call of the kestrel? I can do a bit better than that. No, oh, even better. So key 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 key, different to a peregrine, which is much more strident and uh, and menacing. Um, I'll give you a quick bit of peregrine. This will probably result in the cat running out of the room, I think. But anyway, let's see what happens. Uh, here we go. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Keith. Um, another one a request is the nightingale. How to uh, distinguish the nightingale song? Can you? Uh, yeah. So nightingale. Rare, rare bird for Hampshire, I know, but um, it is very much. I'm afraid. Um, so I'm going to play you two. Actually, this is. Uh, I'm going to play you the nightingale, and I'm also going to play you a wonderful European European bird called the thrush nightingale. How do you tell the nightingale? Well, it's another one of these birds where the female is known to select the male based on the repertoire that that bird has. And when we analyze the song of the nightingale year after year, we know that each bird develops its song as, as it gets older. So here's the, um, the nightingale. It trills a lot, lots of single whistling notes. <laughs>
That is a wonderful sound. Um, the other one I'm going to play you now is Thrush Nightingale, which is a bird you can hear if you go to Sweden. And I think it, it's just so much better, actually, than, night than our Nightingale. Yeah, that one's not coming through, Keith. No? Okay, let me try it again. Let me try it again. I wonder if it's because of these. Uh, I think it's okay. That better? Yeah, coming through I don't this. I where you're getting the sound from, that's the thing. You might be getting it through the microphone of my earpiece. Yeah, got it, got it. <laughs> right, definitely myself. Sorry about that. Here's the thrush nightingale. Right. Uh, yeah, the trouble is now, Keith, the, the, the floodgates are open. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Jays are next on the request. <laughs> Can you cover Jays? Jays, sorry, I thought you said yeah, Jays. Jays, sorry, Keith. Right. Jays, 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 yes. Well, Jays are very uh, screechy birds. Um, so I've now worked out that actually these headphones have a microphone in, and that microphone up here now doesn't work anymore. So, Jay. So that one actually did some really weird sounds. Um, I think they they do a lot of impersonations as well. Uh, they're very odd birds in that respect. Got any more? Yeah, I have, Keith. Uh, the Kingfisher. Uh, oh, right, the yeah. Rivers. Well, Kingfish is a very high pitched sound, but it's a good one to know um, because because it's um, you'll hear it before you see it very often. So I'm not quite sure where the sound's coming through, but I'm going to use try and use everything in my armory. Don't know how well that came through, but there was a moorhen also in that. Yeah, I think the moorhen probably was uh, muting it a little bit. Um, a little bit, I agree with that. A um, couple more on on bird song specifics, and then I'll perhaps switch to another uh, non direct uh, request uh, sound sure. questions. Uh, trying to dis distinction between a gold crest and a fire crest. I know you've covered right. the, the the pitch of the fire the the gold crest earlier and the difficulties there, but what absolutely. About so the the, the, the fire crest is a lot more high pitched than the gold crest. So gold crest is a sort of a, if I was doing it as a, as a word, I'd go diddly, 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 d, whereas a fire crest is not like that at all. Fire crest is like this. So I don't know if that came through, but that's a very high pitched sound. I really struggle to hear that. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. So I'm not probably not best to judge whether that was heard yeah. by everybody else because I, I know I struggle a little bit too. You can see lots of chat coming up. Yeah. We've got through them all. Got uh, no, we've got a few more listed. Um, one question, one more observation slash questions about the yellowhammer, often seen around the Winchester area or, or not an uncommon bird. Um, you offer comments around the yellowhammer? Do you want to have the song with the yellowhammer then? Why not? Uh, so yellowhammer has got one of these old fashioned sayings, supposed to say a little bit of bread and no cheese. So uh, let's see if you agree with that. Little bit of bread and no cheese. Yeah. Try it again. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, that was in there for me. Uh, right, let me switch. There are, and there's a, I know there's one or two questions on Robin, so I'll, I'll pick those up in a second from the mm -hmm. chat list. But a couple of others I've got away from specific uh, species. Uh, another one about um, apps again, Keith. I know you covered the Collins one, which I know is mm -hmm. one that you use regularly. 
Um, there was a specific question about any free apps out there that are worth worth using, but any other apps in uh, addition to the Collins one that you uh, perhaps have used experience that you might suggest? Um, okay. So if you're trying to find a song of a bird, uh, there's a really wonderful app called Zeno Canto. So that's X-E-N-O um, space C-A-N-T-O, Zeno Canto. And if you use that, you could look up something like, well, there is 11,000 species of birds in the world and 10,000 of them are on Zeno Canto for free. But it's quite a difficult site to navigate unless you know what you're looking for. You know, if you went in and looked for grape tip, there'd probably be something like a thousand recordings of Great Tit on there because there are over a thousand people contributing to it. It's a free resource. But if you if you want to find a song of a, like I mentioned, Musician Wren, one of the best bird songs in the world, if you go to Zeno Canto, type in, or just type in Zeno Canto Musician Wren into Google and you'll, you'll find it. I might even do it now. Uh, but... Uh, it is a it's a very good uh, let's see if I can do that. It's actually let's see if this works. Hang on one sec. Zeno Canto Musician Wren. No. no. Zeno Canto Musician Wren. Yes, it's found it. Here we go. And I'm gonna play that for you. Hopefully. I'm going to assume it doesn't actually sing the distortion. Uh, <laughs> I think the good parts of that was uh, really tuneful. I think, Keith, we may have um, struggling to uh, to hear the moment. You looked as though you've frozen. There's one question which I know yeah. I can... Uh, we, we, lo we lost you for a bit there, Keith. We were, I know. We, we went and came back. Yeah, got you back now. We got you back. Um, I was going to say, there's one question I can I can kill off immediately, which is around, actually, someone's asking around that £16 um, subscription. That's actually an annual, that's an a, a, annual payment. So the current current £16 is, is a per year membership, which which then covers the uh, the cost of the uh, of the magazine and the annual report, which which Keith made reference to. Keith, um, there's a couple more questions. Uh, let's, let's one here about, it's, it's kind of, <sighs> Trying to remember or, or, or learn all these birds can be daunting uh, as one starts. I mean, I think for many of us, it's it's a it's an ongoing journey. Um, any suggestions on how best to start? I mean, is there a core group of birds you'd suggest learning and then building from there? I know you've made some references as we go through the night. Is there any suggestions you'd make? Or have we lost Keith altogether? I think we've lost Keith altogether. I think it, well, I think I've answered the question for him, but I would just give him a second to come back. It's all one you yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, so I would say the best thing is to learn a few. Um, so song thrush, blackbird, mizzle thrush, then move up from that and, and keep on going. I hope you can hear me. Um, it looks to me as though the, the line is very uh, bad at the moment from my end. You're back, Keith. You're back with us. Um, getting close to the hour. Um, I did say there's a couple on the robin, so let's just let's carry on those. Um, question there we have two robins in our garden regularly are they likely to be male and or female um yes do they look uh, they're likely to be one of each um two male robins wouldn't tolerate each other and neither would two females okay um a robin that makes us sound like two steel balls knocking together or loud clicks is that yeah a that's the alarm that? call so the robin has a tick tick alarm call um so that's what you're hearing there Okay. Um, okay. I'll come back to the last one in a second. There was one other actually that came in before, which was talking about timing of bird songs. You've shared comments on months of the years. Um, I think, and I'm going to make an assumption on this one. Are there particular species or birds that start earlier than others in the morning, irrespective of time of year? Sure. Um, so, the, so I should actually just mention about the dawn chorus is something you get really only in the spring. Um, and what you'll notice if you listen to the dawn chorus is it starts with things like the robin, 
um, and the blackbird, then the song thrush will come in. It's quite interesting to see them coming in one after another. But if you listen to it at four o'clock in the morning in the summer, it's really, really loud. And then it tails off at around about six o'clock. And that's a real sign that what happens then is that the birds have decided, right, done all the singing stuff, re-established our territory, now we've got to go and find some food. And of course, it's become more light and they've got the light in order to find the food. So, so bird song goes through waves. And then you had another wave at the end of the day, almost like they're reminding each other before they, they go to roost that you know, these are their territories and they start singing again. For me, there's nothing better than the sound of a dawn chorus. It's just amazing. Right, um, Keith, that's the last one. There's one more which I'll answer, and then I think I'll probably uh, wrap up from you and then pass back to Simon as we come to the air. There was one question, I think, back to back to Hoz. There was a question about, do we run walks to aid with ID uh, identification? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, at the moment, given the ongoing lockdown, we've had to stop our program of walks, but ordinarily, um, we have a very active um, walks program throughout the year. Um, including and, including birdsong ones, we do absolutely. about we do about five that are just dedicated with small groups. So we'd have maybe fifteen people just doing birdsong in the New Forest or somewhere near to Winchester, maybe. So, yeah, we charge a small amount for those extra ones, just just as a small amount, like a ten pound, I think. Right, Keith, that's it. Um, any final comment? Otherwise, I'll, well, I'll ask Simon to come off mute and uh, close with a few uh, few closing remarks. Well, I've enjoyed it. I'm just going to say I've, I, you know, really, really enjoyed doing the DJ job. Um, as a as a DJ, uh, I should have the shades on. So uh, there we go. Um, sorry about the sound dropping out, but um, yeah, there we go. Thanks, Oops. Keith. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Good choice there. Perhaps a bit missed time, time of year, Keith. But anyway, um, Simon, over to you to close. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Keith's next DJ session. Get the wheels of steel out, Keith. That we yeah, both absolutely, absolutely. Um, just like to say thank you to both Keith and for Barry for running things tonight. It's been really enjoyable again, really informative. Um, lots of good comments coming through on the chat now. Um, again, I'll remind everyone on Wild Winchester, um, just drop some notes on there about ideas if you do have other ideas for talks or, or things, and we'll try and facilitate those in the future. We will do something on uh, peregrines, but that will be in peregrine season. So when's that, Keith? Uh, well, that's a good, good question. So peregrines, basically, Winnie and Chester are definitely around in Winchester. I've been asked that many times. They're definitely both around. Um, just waiting for the cathedral to uh, wind up the, uh, the camera. That should be up soon. Uh, normally, Winnie will start making the nest, which, which basically is about going down into the gravel and spreading it around she's probably done that already uh, and will lay eggs usually on about the 20th between the 15th and 20th of March so make a note of that hatching just over a month after that so the cameras will be on before that and uh, that's when you want to look for excellent so yeah potentially we'll have a talk on the peregrines in the spring uh, but if there is anything that you want us to organize between now and then then do drop a note on the, the page or you can message me direct and Keith and I will discuss it through. Uh, or if you just want an hour of Keith's DJ set, that'll be fine as well. Hopefully with the internet working well. I'll have Absolutely. to work out how these headphones work before I do that, I think. <laughs> right, thank you very much again, guys. Uh, thank you everyone for coming along tonight and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Thank Simon. Just, just closing comment. Uh, tonight is recorded and will be uploaded to the Hoz website. Hopefully be up there tomorrow. So uh, if anyone fancies listening through again, um, it will be accessible, um, irrespective of whether you remember or not, um, from, from tomorrow at some point. But I hope you all join anyway, so that will be nice. Thank you very much indeed for being a great audience. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Thank you.